Hello and welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Inka Vat. For decades, Taiwan tried to purchase a fleet of modern submarines from other countries. Now the nation is making its own. This is what the president had to say. With me to discuss this are Tony Hu, former U.S. Department of Defense, Senior Director for China, Taiwan and Mongolia, and Guillermo Lillari, retired U.S. Air Force Foreign Area Officer specializing in counterterrorism, irregular warfare and missile defense. Tony Guillermo, very well, welcome to the show. Thank today. you. Thank you. Um, Tony, let's start with you first. So why was a Taiwan-made submarine thought impossible before? Well, because there are a lot of major obstacles Taiwan had to overcome to build a submarine. Uh, the fact that you have to build a hull that can withstand uh, the pressure of uh, underwater operations and integration of the different systems, M many of them are foreign from different sources and put it all together to to give it a full combat capability, that is significant, that is a major challenge. And apparently Taiwan was able to overcome all those challenges and make it happen. Mm. One of the things that obviously for, for security reasons has been kept secret, as, as has the propeller design and also you know, the kinds of weapon systems that this, uh, this, this submarine, which is called the Narwhal, which uh, mm -hmm. in, in English or in Chinese is Hai Kun or Sea Monster, um, that it might, it might hold and use. Um, let's talk about what difference this makes. I mean, what do we look for? What should Taiwan be looking for uh, in a submarine? And does this one deliver? Finding submarines underwater is very difficult. Um, and so they pose a great threat to any surface ship mm -hmm. as well as other submarines because you have the submarine war going on underneath. Mm -hmm. So you can, you, can, you can imagine that a submarine is like an aircraft underwater. It's three dimensions, whereas the, the, the battle on the surface is two dimension. So the submarines can operate in, in this three dimensional world, uh, whereas the surface ships... Sorry, when you say three dimensional, if you could spell that out. Uh, well. Uh, let's say you have a, um, the army, right? Uh, when they move things, it's on land. Mm -hmm. And the tanks uh, and the jeeps and et cetera, they, they basically they operate on the surface of the earth. Right. Um, but the Air Force mm -hmm. is flying around mm -hmm. in this three-dimensional space above it. Uh, it's not going in a straight direction. It can turn, it can go up, and can go down. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with a submarine. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the depth of the sea, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. no, it's okay. But, uh, the, yeah. The, but the important thing is, is that um, the fact that Taiwan has its own submarines uh, means that it can um, prevent or cause havoc against a series of threats that China can present. For mm. example, a blockade. Submarines can sink ships that the, the PLA sends out to prevent ships from coming in, into or out of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So we can prevent an invasion. Well, th that's the second part. I mean, the blockade is mm -hmm. one part, mm -hmm. and it can also prevent an invasion. And during an invasion, it can also uh, prevent resupply of ships that would be, let's say, they took a part of a uh, Taiwan island. You know, God forbid, but it, let's say they did. The submarines can continually uh, prevent more ships from coming coming at Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And also, the, I guess, the third thing is is it provides sort of this um, intelligence aspect of monitoring mm. the PLA Navy and what they're doing out at sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tony, if you can address um, the stealth and perhaps also the surveillance. Yeah, absolutely. So submarine, basically what g men try to express is it increases risk to any PRC planner who wants to do an operation against Taiwan. It reduces the confidence level of probability of success and that is because what G-Man said, submarines hard to detect, hard to, hard to defend against. Mm -hmm. So when Taiwan throw this factor into the overall Chinese threat, now they have to worry about, can I really accomplish what I want to accomplish? So submarine I is a significant upgrade in terms of deterrence. Mm. So, but, uh, but if the submarine is a noisy one, so traditionally we think of diesel um, mm. submarines as being noisy and nuclear ones as being quiet. that's reversed because 
The diesel ones actually is quieter, especially they're only noisy when they try to recharge the battery, when they have to run the diesel engine. Diesel submarine actually operates like electric motorcycle. It's an electric motor. There's no sound. Now, when the battery gets depleted, they have to use diesel engine to charge, recharge the battery. When they snorkel to recharge, that's when they're noisy. So day to day as their operation, they actually are very quiet. Now, I noticed Taiwan's new sub also has uh, the anechoid, uh, anechoid coatings on top. That's to, to absorb uh, sonars and detections. So it has the passive defenses it, that it needs. Plus, it also, through uh, uh, Chongshan Institute of Science and Technology, Zhong Keyuan, mm. they have develop, developed um, uh, submarine decoys, the, mm -hmm. the Nixie system. Basically, it will uh, try to protect the submarine if it's under attack by, by a torpedo. It will create false targets to allow the submarine to escape and survive. So the submarine Taiwan's building looks like it has uh, a level of self-protection built in. In addition to, uh, of being quiet diesel submarine, it has the, s the sonar absorbing coating mm -hmm. and it also has the submarine self-protection system built in. So um, I would say this is a good submarine. Of course, the key point, the absolute key point is now the submarine is going to complete its build and go into a operational testing phase. Mm. That testing has to be very rigorous. Taiwan should not be kind to themselves. They need to make sure everything meets or exceeds the, the requirement. Mm. And uh, this is an issue in Taiwan. A lot of times because of political pressure, they want to do things uh, at a certain time when it's not really ready. So uh, I think it's important to stay on track as far as performance acceptance, not a time standard. Gamon, the, um, you know, we've talked about how useful these subs will be, um, but China's uh, sub fleet mm. is around 60. Correct. Um, and they keep boasting of the, the nuclear um, the nuclear submarine. So fleet. remember, remember mm. that um, a submarine can be used to defend mm. or attack. Mm. So China, can, uh, China, China has um, six uh, SSMs, which are attack submarines, and it has six ballistic missile submarines. Mm. Um, and the rest of their 44 are um, diesel submarines. Um, so they can, they can cause problems for, let's say, an invasion against China uh, because they have limited range. Those diesel submarines, they, they can't go very far. And so what, what's unique, what's very special about the, the submarines that Taiwan has is that they function in the same way as the Japanese submarines do, is that they stay in, in the littoral waters around mm. Taiwan, mm. roughly, mm -hmm. um, and, and they, they, can, they can choke off, for example, any shipping, like an aircraft carrier coming from Hainan Island out mm. to the Pacific, they can prevent those ships from going out. Uh, and also to the north, to, uh, to the, the straits up there, the Miyaka Straits. So um, the other part of it is, is that because this was made uh, in, in part with the collaboration of other countries, mm. this submarine can work in conjunction with Japanese submarines, with the U.S. submarines, and recently the Philippine uh, President Marcos said he, was g he wants some submarines as well. Mm. The French appear to be uh, 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 interested in selling him some. So we're talking about an allied force. Right, so now you mm. have not just the mm. eight mm -hmm. that Taiwan has, you have uh, the 20 plus that Jap Japan has, you have mm. the, uh, uh, by the way, the U.S. has much has more, I think has 68 or 70, and they're all nuclear powered. Mm -hmm. mm. The U.S. has no, has no uh, diesel, although they, s they used to have them up until 1990. Mm. So the idea is that it, y you can't just look at China and Taiwan. Mm. You have to look at the context mm. of the allied structure. Okay, and we've got AUKUS as well. Correct. Obviously. Yes. Correct. And Australia is is kicking mm -hmm. in as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Tony, given all this, you know, there are still are critics that say that the submarines are sort of um, like a poor use of Taiwan's limited resources. You know, they say that Taiwan should be bu um, buying more sort of anti-aircraft, anti-ship missiles, land-based. What's your take on that? Well, there are two camps uh, of thoughts I in this. Obviously, yes, submarines is an expensive undertaking, and Taiwan could have uh, used it in, in, in different ways. But then, 
uh, it is always good to have your own defense capability, uh, even if situation changes where Taiwan has to somehow fend for itself and they have the submarine capability. So um, it depends on which side you, you, you look at this whole issue. Uh, both sides have uh, valid points, and uh, certainly now that Taiwan has decided to take down, go down this path, and then they need to do this well mm -hmm. and, and make sure they have true combat capability versus just the name submarine. Mm. Come on, 1.53 billion for one sub. Right. Is that money well spent? Yes, uh, and, you, uh, and uh, we were talking earlier about the, mm. the concept of asymmetric warfare. Everyone thinks asymmetric warfare is all about cheap weapons. Mm. Well, the word asymmetric actually started referring to submarines, submarines. in World War I. So the submarine is actually the ultimate uh, asymmetric, asymmetric weapon mm. uh, to combat not only the the surface ships and the subsurface ships, but it also uh, is a great uh, tool to um, to monitor, to make sure mm. that Taiwan's defense is intact as part of a holistic process that Tony mentioned. Mm. If, if Taiwan has to defend itself, well, it now it has the, the submarines that mm. it can. Right. Uh, mm. And so it's so important f uh, for, yeah. for Taiwan to have that. Yeah, and I think that was what um, the president has stressed when right. she unveiled the right. submarine, is right. you know the idea that Taiwan's um, defense industry now had autonomy. That's true. Mm. It, it, this is a, a significant accomplishment by Taiwan's defense industry to be able to build the submarine mm. successfully. And uh, I, I must you know, applaud them for this accomplishment. They made the uh, impossible possible. Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's uh, let's talk about their, or list at least, the, the other countries that, that can make their own submarines. I mean, it means that Taiwan goes into the ranks with the US, Germany, Japan, Spain, France. Netherlands. Yeah. Netherlands and uh, Sweden. It, Norway. Mm. Yeah. And Taiwan did this without a lot of foreign help. You know, Japan and Australia, they, they all had significant foreign help. And uh, Taiwan did this majority of the activities were all done by the Taiwan defense industry. So yeah, they, they, they should be recognized for their significant accomplishment. Mm. And similarly, the, uh, the Taiwanese military, the ROC military also uh, made its own fighter jet. I mean, so in mm. a sense, this, the fighter jet and the submarine it's are the underwater, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> the underwater part of it. And mm. And I think it's also important to mention that um, people get so focused on the submarine itself, they forget that also in the press recently it was, it was announced that Taiwan is building a midget submarine uh, mm -hmm. called the Hualiang Project. And uh, it's a smaller submarine. It's 30 meters long mm -hmm. uh, and only 100 tons. So this could be a test bed, but it also can be used as a weapon because it's, it's, it's armed. Mm. Um, and so, so to counter the arguments about spending too much money on a, mm. on a uh, $1.6 billion dollar, mm -hmm. uh, submarine. And by the way, that's the first price. Uh, usually it, it goes down, down. Uh, yeah. a, 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 okay. as it's developed. But right. this, of course, uh, the price wasn't listed, but this is another alternative. And y you know, the US Air Force is doing something similar with, um, uh, with uh, a drone program mm. that, that the drones fly with the aircraft right. and are used in conjunction with it. Mm. So this, mm. This in conjunction with a submarine would, is a great, great it's economies weapon. of scale, a kind yeah. of economies of scale. Right? Exactly. Okay. So meanwhile, the United States is reportedly reviving its Cold War era submarine surveillance program to counter China, according to Reuters. The existence of the Integrated Undersea Surveillance System, or IUSS, project was only made public in 1991 at the end of the Cold War, and details of its operations remain top secret. The revamp modernizes the existing network of underwater cables designed to spy on Soviet submarines seven decades ago. The Navy will also deploy unmanned sea drones to listen for enemy craft, place portable underwater satellite sensors on the seafloor, use satellites to locate ships by tracking their radio frequencies, and harness AI. Tony, as I mentioned there, this is a top secret program. So do you think the Reuters report was a deliberate leak? This is highly classified uh, program, and uh, they use revitalization. I would, it actually never went away, and it has always been an important element of our strategic surveillance. In, we talked about earlier, submarine is a very difficult system to defend. Mm. 
So the United States want to stay ahead of the game with uh, strategic systems that continuously monitor adversary submarine force, uh, the movement of the submarine force before a conflict starts. So that in, when the conflict does start, the United States anti-submarine assets has a, a step ahead of the adversary because we know approximately where they're at or exactly where they're at. Mm. So we can kill them right away because mm. submarine Unless you catch them early, find them, and know where they are, and kill them early, they can really do a significant damage. Mm -hmm. They can do s a lot of damage to your forces. Mm -hmm. So, for many, many, many years, it has always been United States Navy's intent to keep track of any adversary submarine before the conflict starts. That's mm -hmm. why the U uh, IUSS system was installed, and now the system is being expanded mm -hmm. with unmanned sensors, and, and r in addition to the, the, on the underwater cable, um, many, many moons ago when I was briefed on the system, uh, we only had what they talked about, the underwater sensors and stuff. Now, obviously, uh, it's expanded to include many other systems. So uh, I would call this expansion uh, of the, our ability to maintain a strategic advantage against uh, adversary submarines. Uh, so that, like I said, on the onset of a conflict, mm. we can take them out mm. and uh, uh, remove that, that threat. What, what message is that meant to be sending? I think uh, the, the message is trying to s say that you can no longer uh, count on the submarine as a, um, a significant force multiplier in your war plan, that the system are in place uh, to uh, help our anti-submarine warfare on the very beginning and continuously throughout a fight, mm -hmm. if there is a fight. Of course, China is doing similar things, trying to install those sensors, mm -hmm. underwater sensors, but they're maybe 30 years behind mm -hmm. uh, uh, b because this system has been around for, for literally decades mm -hmm. and uh, uh, is, it remains uh, mm -hmm. top secret and uh, highly compartmentized. Guillemont, so um, Tony mentioned there about sort of seeing things happen before they actually do. So what do we expect to see um, submarine-wise uh, from China if there was a Taiwan contingency? So one of the things that uh, uh, during the Cold War, as Tony mentioned, one of the most important um, threat to the United States is nuclear weapons. And so the location of those uh, six ballistic missile submarines right now is very important to the United States because if, it, uh, if they uh, all shoot out into the Pacific, then um, a, lot, a, a large portion of the United States is at risk. And, uh, and, and Tony mentioned the whole idea of risk management. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, in, the, in the Taiwan Strait crisis, um, the if, if, if and when the U.S. and other allied forces uh, come to the aid of Taiwan, uh, a lot of that aid will come in, in the form of ships, uh, whether aircraft carriers, destroyers, even submarines and cruisers. Um, and so um, the U.S., Taiwan, Japan, and all the countries that would help uh, Taiwan would want to know where those submarines are because no, no one wants to sink an aircraft carrier on your own side. You know, mm -hmm. they put it right in front of a of a Chinese sub. So um, the importance of where those submarines are mm. is, is critical. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you the, would the start to see the, them? The non-nuclear mm -hmm. ones. Mm. The, so the SSN, the six SSN, and then the other 44 mm -hmm. diesel submarines, mm -hmm. where they are, where mm -hmm. they're located, and then uh, if they're getting close to your force, then you have to find them and destroy them. Mm. And that's why it's important for the system to come up. Some of the um, uh, advancements or the modernizations from you know 70 years ago although you did say that it's been continuing yes it always yeah. been, it's uh, always been there yeah. yeah well let's bring in um, a relatively recent news um, which is the Titan submersible of course that, that the tragedy um, where several people died mm -hmm. um, underwater and of course that was US technology that uh, was able to explain what what happened now was the connection between that and the IUSS well, it's a sensor down there, mm -hmm. and the sensor picked it up. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's probably as far as, as much as I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the location of these sensors and the sensitivity of these sensors are top secret. Mm. So, you know, we, we, we obviously don't want to go there. Mm. And uh, so it's true uh, that that also exposed uh, the fact that we have uh, sensors down there mm. and we have sensors in a lot of places. Mm. And uh, so this is the, in a wartime, this is an advantage, mm -hmm. obviously, because you can hear things. And uh, um, even submarine, when no matter how quiet they are, uh, at a certain distance, the sensors will pick it up, and the sensor can trigger other anti-submarine uh, systems uh, to deploy and uh, triangulate and pinpoint and kill. Mm -hmm. So um, the, this system is obviously very important to our national security, and, and that's why it remains highly classified. But uh, right, that that singular event, I believe, you know, U.S. Navy probably was reluctant mm. to release that kind of information, but mm. for the good of the public. So, so the, the Chinese would have been watching with great interest. <laughs> they would. Um, they should have been. They, to the, they, the they, should be. they, they should be. Yeah, Gemma, you wanted to. Um, you could cover some of the yeah. other modernizations yeah. since yeah, recently. Yeah, I, I think I wanted to add to what Tony's saying is mm. that um, prior to the IUSS um, program was a program called SOSIS, which is Sound Surveillance System. Mm -hmm. And that was started in the 1950s uh, to track uh, submarines and later mm -hmm. on to track nuclear submarines, boomers they call them. Um, so this system can be used, as Tony said, for targeting, but it can also be used to save as an example of the Titan. Mm -hmm. But before this Titan incident, there were several other incidences where US submarines um, were lost mm -hmm. at sea. Mm -hmm. And because of this system, they were able to found, find them. Um, and also, there was a, a, a case where a Soviet submarine was lost at sea, mm -hmm. and the US helped the Russians find their submarine. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just for um, targeting, it's also mm -hmm. to deal with uh, emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, and some of, the th some of the key words getting to the program itself, some of the key words that you, that you see about the program, and this is from officials, this is not just reporting. It talks about um, from, the s from, s from the space to the under, under the water. Mm -hmm. So um, all the systems, all the intelligence systems um, can be involved in monitoring not only uh, where these submarines are, but mm -hmm. also where the ships are, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So you see that the basically the moderni modernization is the integration yes. of the different domains. Yes, yes. yes. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, uh, one of the key aspects is um, the concept especially for submarines, mm. is the concept of uh, what we call as MAZINT, another form of intelligence. It's, it's measurement and sis mm -hmm. signature intelligence. Mm -hmm. So every object moving through water has a profile. And uh, submarines have a pe pe uh, peculiar profile because they have s specific kinds of rudders and uh, engines and make certain kinds of sounds mm. and uh, et cetera. So all these things, the sounds, the movement of metal through water mm. uh, creates a magnetic field. So all kinds of things can be used to detect submarines. Mm. And all these things are, being, are going to be used now in, in more uh, aggressive and more um, uh, uh, important way. Another thing they mentioned is uh, not only, the, again, not only attack part and saving people, but also monitoring the status of the high, the high capacity underwater cables. Uh, and uh, or anything that's uh, any anything that's traveling um, along the ocean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, protecting those forces. Mm -hmm. In the 1980s, we had a program where we we reflagged ships in the Persian Gulf so that we would protect the oil mm -hmm. coming out of the Persian Gulf or the mm -hmm. Arabian Gulf. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this whole system can be used in, in lots of different places. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's a there's actually a book that was written. Um, uh, by uh, Ball and Tanter called the, the Tools of Awatatsumi. It's about Japanese, the Japanese equivalent of SOSIS or mm. IUSS. Mm. So several countries have this system. It's not just the U.S. Mm. And, and, not the, and not just the, the, the Chinese building their, their great wall of water, which mm. is what they call it. Right, uh, right. And of course, we should also bring in the fact that there were the cables that were servicing Matsu, the outlying Taiwanese island, was cut. Mm. Uh, Taiwan says by China, and then following that, there was a commitment by the Quad. It the, was quad. the Quad. Okay, mm -hmm. um, to to yeah, commitment to, to to help monitor those those cables. Now, um, 
Tony, um, you mentioned that the Chinese um, are also building a fleet of underwater um, drones, and this is also to, to scan for enemy submarines. What do we know about how they're getting the technology? Well, uh, one of the things they, that they stole is this. It's underwater drone. I don't know if you have a chance you can uh, mm. show this. In any case, in 2016, uh, mm. Chinese took one of this from our survey ship. It was a remote control item, and our survey ship was retrieving it about 100 uh, feet from the ship. Um, the, the Chinese, the, their warship sent out a rubber boat and grabbed it right out of the water. And uh, they eventually gave it back after they copied the technology. Uh, three years later, they, their own drones uh, out there. And this drone basically measures the water uh, condition. And uh, this is critically important for uh, anti-submarine warfare, the temperature, the water, and the, because it affects the transmission rate of uh, your, your signals. So China is getting better at this, and China has uh, systems that can cut cables, in, in undersea cables. So the fact that they, they, they took this type of action against Machu, I, I suspect it has a uh, uh, strategic meaning of, of warning uh, Taiwan that they have the capability. Therefore, uh, it's important that uh, Taiwan and uh, Taiwan's allies look at how to defend against uh, things like this from happening. Uh, of course, there are redundancy through satellite that can be replaced, uh, provide some of that capability. Uh, it, the key is to prevent this from happening. Mm, okay, we'll have to end there. Tony Gemmel, thank you for your time today. Thank you. thank you. If you liked our show, please search for us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching our show today. Stay safe and see you next time.